And the other benefit that you didn't touch on is the activation of stem cells. And I was skeptical when you first shared this with me. So I looked it up and it's clear and sure enough, it's very clear in the literature. You didn't believe well, me? No, I didn't. I got to double check everything. So it's well documented that yeah. this radically improves stem cell activation. And, and, and just, not to give people, just to give people a reminder though, stem cell uh, therapy typically is a five figure intervention that's not covered by insurance. So you're gonna pay ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So why do that when you can do an intervention that's safe and has all these other benefits, it's gonna activate your stem cells and probably provide similar, if not even better, overall therapy benefits. Yeah, I mean, so it's not just, because we, we were talking about musculoskeletal stem cells, it's also right. Yeah. nervous system well, stem cells. So you can well, literally- Well, I was talking about the stem microcirculation stem to increase the function of the existing ones, but yes, right. it also increases other stem cells. Exactly. You know, and so, I mean, in our office, what we would do, we don't do stem cell injections or IV or anything like this, but, you know, through all the other modalities too, with, um, you know, with various fasting techniques, you can change uh, stem cell releases also. So if you, if you, if you go into stem cell therapy where you're going to spend, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000, but the environment of your body is virtually unchanged it's really hard to get those stem cells to behave in any other way than your, your tissues already behaving. If you actually go through the process where you're, you're, you're correcting all the other biochemistry and you're getting the inflammation under control, and then you're mega dosing oxygen, besides the fact that you're creating an environment internally that's gonna support the stem cells, you're already upregulating your own stem cells. And so even if you choose, let's say, to do some type of stem cell therapy, I believe if you upregulate your own stem cell system and then add a layer of stem cells to that, your body's already in the process of getting ready to utilize them. The effectiveness is going to be, you know, tremendously higher. And in a lot of cases, we've seen that, you know, people don't need to do that therapy if they give the oxygen therapy a long enough shot. Yeah. And in my view, it's really irresponsible if you decide for whatever reason that you need stem cell therapy, that's fine, that's your choice. But if you go that route, just go the next step and get some hyperbaric after you have those stem cells injected. So what, why don't you just provide your recommendations for someone who is getting a stem cell injections or stem cell therapy as to the frequency and the timing of those hyperbaric treatments? Sure. I mean, so in a perfect world, I'd say you'd spend at least a month or two before stem cell therapy, like oh, understanding, okay. you know, un, not even just for hyperbaric, just understanding your whole, whatever it's an inflammatory cascade or, or a, other, you know, chronic illness that you have so that you're, you're already starting to, to shift the internal environment in a way that's going to be conducive to the new cells once they're, once they're injected. Uh, we typically, from an oxygen only standpoint, uh, I would typically run somewhere between 10 and 20 hours before because that's where you're going to hit the mark where your body's going to start upregulating up its own stem cells. If you're going for stem cell retrieval, so the doc's actually going to pull your own stem cells, if you go through a hyperbaric oxygen, let's say about 20 hours before, your, your retrieval is going to be a much higher retrieval because you've already started to release uh, a lot of your own stem cells. Uh, so usually somewhere between 10 and 20 hours prior to uh, a stem cell therapy, and then definitely a minimum of 20, but usually 40 hours post to really make sure that they're going to be able to take hold and, and do what they need to do to, to change, you know, the, the physiology for you. Well, thanks. I didn't realize it was so many. I just thought it might have been a few, but thank you for expanding on that.